So we just got our block back from its hundred thousands haircut off the deck and uh, we're finally getting away on this thing and we're at 127 pounds without caps which is 11 pounds lighter than we started with so that's a nice chunk of weight. The, the 11 pounds off of this combined with the 5 pounds off the head will bring our, uh, our rolling weight on our car to under 2100 pounds and that's not including the, the crankshaft that we're putting in there that's, that's 16 pounds lighter than the original one. Um, so we're on the right track as far as that goes. But I wanted to talk about why we chose to cut the deck instead of going with pistons. Because there are a couple of options that will get you some compression with the slant 6 as far as pistons go. You can use the 2.2 turbo piston as a common thing. Uh, Weissco makes a, uh, a high compression piston for these. The problem is, is that all of those pistons require the longer 198 connecting rod. The slant has an extremely, relative to, to everything else, the, the slant has an extremely tall deck, the, 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 the 225. So to get compression to get the piston up there, you've really got to, you know, you got to stretch the rod. The problem with going with the longer rod, the problem with going with the 198 rod in the 225 is that you're creating an engine that has 7, 8,000 RPM geometry with a cylinder head that's done by 6,000 RPM. So it's counterproductive and it creates a very peaky engine, something that's, that's, that's only going to make power in a, in a tight, high 5, 6,000 RPM, you know, 6,500 RPM range. That's not what we need. Um, with our car, with the, the final drive gearing and especially the gear spacing in our, our manual transmission, we need an engine that's going to grunt from about 4,500 right up to like 5,800, 6,000 RPM. So the shortest rod we can get in there is the important thing. So now, by taking a hundred thousandths off the deck and taking a hundred thousandths off the head, uh, ballpark according to the, you know, the, the, the rough math that I did, and I suck at math, but it works out, uh, ballpark compression ratio, static compression ratio is approximately 10.2 to 1. So that'll get us there. Now a lot of people talk about zero deck motors, and one of the selling points for like the Weisco pistons and all of that is that, you know, zero deck. But zero deck only matters. See, zero deck is like the current catchphrase. You know, everybody building an engine is looking for a zero deck. And zero deck is a good thing if you're dealing with a, a closed chamber head, something that has a quench pad. But the slant doesn't. It has an open chamber head. So zero deck is completely meaningless. Now down the road, I do plan on building, welding in quenched pads into a slant head, but we're not there yet. That'll be down the road. So at any rate, that's why, we, that's why we decided to go with that. With the stock configuration piston, we get just over 10 to 1 compression. And, and of course, the steel shim head gasket. Now, a couple of things. If you are going to do this, you right away people say, well, okay, I'll just save money by shaving the deck and shaving the head. No. It actually costs about the same. Uh, there's a lot, you know, you don't realize taking a hundred thousandths of an inch off of a, off of a deck or of a head, create, it requires a lot of grinding. It's a lot of time at the machine shop. So uh, you're looking to spend between like four and five hundred bucks machining these pieces to get, you know, that's not cheap, but it's necessary if you want to get the kind of squeeze and the kind of geometry that we're looking to get out of this. If you do go ahead and deck yours, there's a couple of things you got to keep in mind if you get the thing back, when you get the thing back. Um, the first is that when they clear the deck, they've removed the chamfers that are, that are built into the bolt holes and around the cylinder walls. So what you want to do is before you before you try to assemble this thing you want to take an oversized drill bit and just cut a chamfer into each of the cylinder head bolt holes and then for the for the bores what I do is I take the hone machine shop will have a, a machine shops have a cone that they put on a drill and you know it, with an abrasive on it and it'll just cut a chamfer in there I don't have one of those cones so what I do is after I hone the engine I'll, I'll use the, uh, the, the the hone stones and just carry them out all the way to the top so that they're, they're kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're sticking out like that. And I'll cut my chamfer that way. You don't have to go too far, but the reason why you need that chamfer there is because when you go to put the rings in, when you go to put the pistons in, the rings will catch on this sharp edge of the cylinder wall. And you never want to have any sharp edges. Like, for instance, that's one of the reasons why you chamfer these holes here. Because the, the thread begins at a very thin section. So what will happen is as you tighten it, you don't want to crack out around the top of the thread. So that's why it's important to chamfer all of these holes before you go any further. Um, so that's it with the block. Uh, no, that's not it with the block. 
So originally, I had planned on picking the block up at, at the guy who was at, at Chuck's place who was doing it, the, the deck for me, and then dropping it off over at the machine shop to have a punch 60. But I'm having second thoughts about that, and I think I'm going to want to keep this thing at standard bore. I'm going to hone this tomorrow, and if I don't see more than, let's say, two or three thousandths bore taper in it after a hone, two thousandths bore taper, then I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble it with the original pistons and a set of new rings. Uh, if I've got substantial bore taper, then then I'll go ahead and cut it 60. It doesn't really pay to uh, you know to, to go to the 30. If you're going to go, go all the way. So I would go to the 60 on this. Um, but you know, I like a thick cylinder wall. It's you know, especially in a thin wall casting like this, the thicker the cylinder wall, uh, the, the the more the engine you know the the, the bore is going to stay round. Uh, the remember the cylinder walls on a, on a cast iron block support the deck, so the more material there is in the cylinder wall, the stronger and more stable a deck surface you have. So that's it with that. We'll find out tomorrow if we're going to punch it or if we're going to leave it alone. Um, that's it. Now the next step is we're going to do the crankshaft. So this is the crank. Yeah. Okay. And um, so this is the later cast crank. It's got. A lot of material, the factory moved tons of material from the counterweights. So you have only these little abbreviated pieces here. Uh, now I've read a bunch of these cranks, and there's a, there's a variance. The lightest of them I found was 60 pounds, 60.5 pounds, and the heaviest was 63 pounds. This one is just almost 63 pounds. Uh, and they're all balanced, the rods and the pistons are all factory balanced at that weight. So in other words, what I'm saying is the factory gives you a lot of leeway in the balance of this. So we're not going to take any substantial metal off of this crank, but we are going to go over the whole casting and take down all of these, you see these, these casting, uh, you know, this flash over here, a lot of rough edges all around the crankshaft. So we're going to take all of those down and we're going to round all of the, all of the, the edges on the counterweights, you know, any place that's got to spin through oil. We're going to take down all of the sharp edges and round them all off. We won't take enough weight off of this crank. To, uh, to affect its balance beyond what would be considered normal for the factory balance. So and that's it. It's just a ton of work. You know, it, it just count on putting a whole day aside to dress out a crankshaft. You know, that's just the way it rolls. Uh, you know, speed costs time and it costs money. How fast you want to go? I'll see you tomorrow.